hi it's crystal your very own personal beauty pro <laughs> when i say i'm a beauty pro i actually am a professional makeup artist of over 10 years along the way i've also become a licensed esthetician and hair stylist i've done some freelance beauty writing i've been a senior editor for a magazine i have worked with some celebrities my primary work is what's called commercial. So I do uh, advertising, some print campaigns. I've done some magazine works, quite a few New York Fashion Week shows. I love what I do and I absolutely love sharing it with others. I want to bring you a little slice of pro level tips, tricks, and techniques with regards to makeup, skincare, and beauty. If you're one of the pretty people and this appeals to you, be sure to subscribe, but definitely like and absolutely comment because I love interacting with you there. Today we're going to have some fun. I'm going to give an initial review and a demonstration of the Clay de Paul Beauté Radiant Fluid Foundation Matte. And as a bonus, I also have the concealer. The Clay de Paul brand is a Japanese brand. It was started in Japan and it really has its root in skincare science. Clay de Paul in English actually means the key to skin's beauty. Clay de Paul is under the Shiseido umbrella, so we know that Shiseido, another Japanese company, is renowned for its skincare. Now, I've really taken up with some bad company in the beauty sphere. They don't call people influencers for nothing. I have definitely been under the influence of the luxury <laughs> beauty community. What pushed me over the edge was an OG YouTuber named The SP Nation. Now, he's not just some fly-by-night character. He definitely knows his stuff. He is a luxury cosmetic connoisseur he has professional training with many different brands he's also hilarious but you have to be a little cautious because sometimes i never know what he might say and when i might have to grab my purse and click off of the video <laughs> but he also has a wealth of quality information especially when it comes to the luxury sphere so when he recently covered the radiant foundation that got me to researching a few items and i saw that they were coming out with a brand new matte foundation but more than that <laughs> after about what 38 years or so they have discovered that there's the rest of the population who are a little deeper than ivory yes it's a long time coming it's upsetting me in my home girl but you know people can either make changes late or they can never make changes at all <laughs> so i'm glad that they are starting to make changes especially with this level of quality anyone who would like to try it that you know it would be nice if they were able to they've expanded the range we'll talk a little bit more about the shades the new foundation comes in their signature navy and gold the bottle is very elegant it's in this beautiful frosted glass with the gorgeous navy and gold cap this particular shade is 070 that's 070 and this is a medium deep ochre and i'm going to explain a little bit about the shade range and the numbering system i do appreciate that clay de poe seems to have a good grasp on their numbering and shading system and they describe it fairly accurately this one is not perfect like i still don't like those perfect almost computer generated looking swatches that are on forearms but as far as the numbering chart i do like it there are 24 shades and as you can see the shade range is spread out um, equitably <laughs> the numbers that start with b are your cooler undertones they look like they lean more pinky red with i and o those look like your neutral undertones and that's what i have o70 and you have the warm undertones there are a few shades in that category and that starts with b F. As I'm looking at the shades, I'm wondering if I could step down a little and you'll see why shortly. I would also like to see in person BF60. I'm wondering if that might be a closer match to my skin tone. 
And I'm curious about what B60 and O60 look like. Start by giving it a good shake. I've chosen my S5557 Hakuhodo brush. This is a foundation brush. It has blended hairs and it has the perfect texture to apply this, I think. It'll give it a nice even finish, just enough softness to give it a beautiful appearance and just enough firmness to um, really blend it in evenly. It promises to be lightweight and glide on easily and it does that for sure. The brush is excellent because I don't see any streaks but it's not absorbing all of my foundation either. And that one pump is covering one side of my face really nicely. It does have a light floral aroma. And they say that the finish is going to be matte and radiant. And some people question that, but the two can coexist. You can have a matte finish that's not super shiny or satiny, but it can still have a little radiance in that it still leaves a little life and a slight reflectiveness to the skin that's more healthy. The foundation also has an SPF of 20, which is nice. I love when I can get a little SPF wherever I can get it. In addition to the regular sunscreen that you should now have made a custom in your everyday skincare routine. It claims to give a refined look and make pores look less visible. And that is really true. Like my pores look very smooth, beautiful. In true Clay de Pole fashion, this foundation is skincare inspired. So not only are you getting a foundation, but it also claims that it's going to give you long-term skincare benefits. The shade is a close match, but it's a bit more tanned than my natural skin tone. I don't mind that. Sometimes I like to look a little bit more bronzy than I am, particularly in the fall winter time. And once I complete my makeup, it does look pretty overall, but I am still very curious, as I mentioned earlier, about how um, one of the six zeros will look. This is 70. I have let it set down totally so you could see what the finish is before we go any further. I mentioned that it is possible for matte and radiance to kind of coexist, but in the case of this foundation, if you are looking for a true matte sort of semi-powdery finish with the absence of any satiny sheen, then this would not be that true solid matte for you. However, if you don't mind a semi-matte that leans more satin than matte, then this is a finish that you may really enjoy. I do recommend after application to go in with one final pounce with a really soft dense brush like this, stipple lightly to kind of finish the surface, or you can do the same with a beauty blender as well. And another thing I discovered, although it's really good um, to dampen a beauty blender to really get that beautiful, soft, moist finish on the blender before you use it on foundations. In the case of this particular foundation, I think it likes a dry sponge better. It may or may not be because it's a silicone based uh, foundation and sometimes they don't necessarily want water. <laughs> coverage is listed as one of their full coverage foundations, but I would definitely say this is a high medium coverage. Um, it might be full coverage in a consumer sense because Full coverage for consumers might be a little different from what I would consider full coverage as a pro. Full coverage as a pro, I would consider something to really completely camouflage imperfections, but um, sometimes it falls a little less than that in the consumer realm, which is fine. This gives a very nice coverage, and if you have any significant imperfections or blemishes or discoloration that you want to cover, then your concealer can take you the rest of the way with this. As a bonus for the first time ever I am going to feature the Clay de Po concealer. Clay de Po concealer is literally iconic in the beauty world 
for both pros and for everyday girls. People have been raving about this for years and Clay Depo finally decided that some of the rest of the population should get to enjoy this as well. These are the types of products that I have been able to use on uh, models and actresses and clients for forever and so often have not been able to enjoy them as thoroughly myself. They have recently extended the range. So pop on over, you may just find something in your shade now. And with concealer, sometimes you know you have a little bit more leeway because you don't necessarily need an exact match, but you need something to camouflage, lift, and brighten. And the shade I selected was Honey. There's a few styles of brushes you can use to apply this. Um, my favorite, I believe, is going to be like a flat paddle style concealer brush. However, um, with concealers, I very often love to use a fluffy blender brush because it gives that beautiful air-like finish. But with the cream, sometimes it might leave some streaks or not give you as smooth of an application. And then um, a brush I've been absolutely loving lately and bought recently is the MAC 270 Synthetic Brush. It's beautiful, dense, super soft, and synthetic brushes are really great for liquid and cream products. Made this concealer so super famous. People love how creamy it is and how it feels. And of course, it has those skincare claims. So it has antioxidants and it's supposed to diminish um, the appearance of any dryness or imperfections. But that's what most concealers should do, isn't it? It makes the claim of being full coverage. And then I'll just gently tap and you don't want to apply too much pressure because you don't want to pick the product up off of the skin. It's really good for products like this to add in super thin layers because it's emollient and because the face is alive and dynamic and it does move, live, and breathe, then it's not unusual that something will travel into the natural crease or crevice under the eye. Once you lay it down where you want to and have the desired coverage that you want, then you most definitely need to set this style of concealer with a powder. Once I set this concealer down with a little powder and add the rest of my makeup, I'm gonna tell you exactly what I think about this concealer and whether or not it's worthy of its fame. And we are back. What do I think about the Clay de Peau Beauté Concealer? I have had a bit of an adventure <laughs> with this one. On the one hand, I can see why people love it because it's so creamy and soothing going on. But the pro in me had a few questions about it. <laughs> Number one question was, where are you going? Because this concealer likes to travel a little bit. It's creamy and emollient. The very thing that makes people love it is also one of the challenges about it because it does like to travel into little creases and crevices underneath the eye. Now, of course, you can blend that out and set it with powder. But initially, I, I did have to wonder. I'm like, why are you falling through the cracks of society, especially for that price? The other thing is you do need to build it up to the full coverage that it claims. But then that's a catch-22 because the more you build it up, then, of course, the more it has a tendency to move but i have to say i am glad i did not give up on her i blended her out layered it up made sure it was nice and smooth and when i set it with a powder my under eye looked like a newborn the clay de paul beauté radiant fluid foundation in the matte formula because there's also a radiance which I'm now dying to try. I want it a few times so I can give you a few thoughts but I definitely want to wear it a little longer and see if it's something that I would like to have again. It's lightweight, it goes on smooth, it feels nourishing and it looks beautiful on the skin. It's surprising how smooth it manages to make your pores because a lot of times the radiant finish can enhance pores but this does smooth them out. It does promise to smooth 
the appearance of roughness and pores in the skin over the course of two weeks. I'd also be curious to know if it does keep its promises of long-term skincare benefits. The coverage is a high, medium, low, full coverage. It has a light floral scent as many luxury foundations tend to do, but this one is exceptionally pretty to me it's not overwhelming if there was any foundation i would compare it to it would be one of my other recent acquisitions the la mer foundation yes i did finally go off the deep end and get the la mer and yes i will absolutely be sharing my thoughts with you on it i think this has some similarities to the la mer it reminds me a little bit of the tom ford radio yes so I've been keeping secrets from you. I have that one too. But the finish is definitely more radiant with Tom Ford. I haven't given it a super long day's wear, about a half day's wear, and it looked smooth and beautiful about four hours in. So it seems to wear well, but I'll give you an update on that too. Let me know if you have any questions at all. I look forward to seeing you in the very next video, but until next time, keep it pretty.